open so today we'll be learning characteristics and classification of organisms biology 0610 we'll be learning dichotomous schemes in another video where i'll be explaining it um in a very detailed manner so this is the syllabus for characteristics of living organisms you will have to define and uh, describe the characteristics of living organisms you'll have to explain the classification systems and you'll have to link the classification with morphology and anatomy you will have to know the sequences of bases in dna that are used as means of classification also you'll have to explain that organisms they share a more uh, recent ancestor when they have similar base sequences in dna and for feature of organisms you'll have to list the features of cells you have to list the features of organisms in the five kingdoms you also have to list the main features of organisms within the plant kingdom and the features of viruses now whatever i to, uh, told now was for the extended students now for the core students it will be this side and over here as well now these are the characteristics of living organisms movement respiration sensitivity growth reproduction excretion and nutrition so these are the seven characteristics so we'll be uh, learning the you have to learn the definitions of each of them so we'll be able to answer in your paper four questions so movement means an action by an organism or part of an organism which causes a change of position or place and remember for biology you'll have to understand what you're learning and respiration are the chemical reactions that break down nutrient molecules in living cells to release energy for metabolism sensitivity is the ability to detect or sense stimuli in the internal or external environment and make appropriate responses growth is a permanent increase in size and remember the word is permanent increase in size and dry mass by increasing the cell number or the cell size reproduction are the processes that make more of the same kind of organism excretion is the removal from organism of toxic materials the waste products of metabolism um and substances in excess requirements now uh, remember that excretion is not the same as ingestion so i have uh, explained the topic excretion in one of my previous videos you can click on the card above to check out that video so this is how it's written um the genus homo will be in capital h and the remaining will be in small letter and species will be in italics and it will be in small letter so sapiens so homo sapiens this is the linear system of classification so first is kingdom phylum class order family genus and species you will have to remember the order of this classification and to remember the order you could learn this mnemonic king philip came over for grand spaghetti so king as kingdom philip as phylum came as class over as order for as family grand is genus and spaghetti is species so you see the uh, first letter of each word and then you will be able to remember each of these there are five kingdoms prokaryotes protoctists fungi animals and plants in this topic you'll have to learn one formula which is magnification of a diagram and it is size of drawing divided by the size of the real object so in animals there are two categories invertebrates and vertebrates vertebrates are animals with a backbone and they have a firm body because their muscles connect to their skeleton now invertebrates are without a backbone they have a soft inner body 
and they are held and the inner body is held in shape by a flexible covering of outer cells or it could also be by a hard covering and exoskeleton there are five types of uh, types of vertebrates amphibians birds uh fish mammals and reptiles so these are the vertebrates and we will be learning uh, we will be looking at the explanation for each of these uh, vertebrates this is a table which might make it easier for you to learn so mammals they have four hair on skin they have a placenta they uh, young feed on milk from the mammary glands they are external ears and they are endothermic an example could be horse uh, dog and other animals mammals birds are uh, they have skin covered in feathers they have two legs two wings and they don't have four limbs they lay eggs with hard shells on land they have a beak they are endothermic and the examples are parrot eagle reptiles are dry fixed scales on skin they lay eggs with rubbery shells on land they uh, they include snake turtle iguana amphibians have smooth moist skin and adults usually live on land and when they live on land they also have lungs the larvae live in water so they have gills and they lay eggs without shells in water examples include frog toad fish they are they have loose wet scales on skin they have gills to breathe and they lay eggs without shells in water you will have to learn each feature of it because they can give you these type of questions for mcqs in paper 2 uh, and sorry paper 1 for mcqs in paper 2 and for uh, structure questions in paper 4 So this is a diagram format of the same uh, details in the table. So you can learn in whichever way you like. And invertebrates, the in the invertebrates with jointed legs, they are part of the phylum Arthropods, and they are classified into the following classes: myriapods, insects, arachnids, and crustaceans. Now let's look at the features of each class. So myriapods they consist of many segments. Each segment contains at least one pair of jointed leg and they have one pair of antenna. An example is centipede. Insects have three part body, the head, thorax and abdomen. They have three pairs of jointed legs, two pairs of wings. and one pair of antenna an example could be butterfly arachnids have two part body the cephalothorax abdomen there are four pairs of jointed legs and they don't have any antenna an example is spider you can remember each of the features uh, by remembering the examples crustaceans they have more than four pairs of jointed legs They have a chalky exoskeleton formed from calcium. They breathe through gills, and they have two pairs of antenna. An example is crab. The order of class from uh, for the most number of jointed legs include first is myriapods, then crustaceans, and then arachnids, and then insects. this uh, this type of question is usually given in the paper 2 question for your mcqs and this is the diagram format for the classification of the art arthropods uh arthropod arachnid crustaceans insects and myriapods nutrition is the taking of a uh, taking in of materials for energy growth and development and nutrition for plants they require light carbon dioxide water and ions animals require organic compounds ions and they need water remember to learn all these definitions really well 
and the vertebrates are also known as uh, phylum vertebrates and phylum annelids are worms with um, bodies which are made up of ring like segments they live in water although some of the annelids they live in soil and examples of annelid which uh, lives in soil is an earthworm and these are uh, examples of phylum annelids phylum mollusks have soft body and they often have a shell it could also be that they don't have a shell and uh, mollusk with a uh, shell includes a snail and without shell a slug and these are examples of phylum mollusks and the uh, uh, last one is phylum nematodes they are worms and unlike annelids they do not have bodies seg uh, divided into segments they are white long and thin so phy uh, phylum annelids they had segmented body but nematodes do not have segmented body instead they are long and thin and these are examples of nematodes and remember for each of these phylum uh, groups you can remember the example of each and then you will be able to think of the features they have now the plant kingdom so the plant kingdom includes organisms like ferns and flowering plants and these are ferns so ferns they have leaves called as fronds they do not produce flowers remember they do not produce flowers instead they reproduce by spores produced on the underside of the fronds this is an example of a fern these are the reproductive spores and these are on the underside of the fronds and flowering plants so flowering plants they reproduce sexually by means of flowers and seeds so the seeds are produced inside the ovary found at the base of the flower now flowering plants can be divided into two groups which is monocotyledons and dicotyledons now we'll see what do they mean by monocotyledons and dicotyledons so in the syllabus there was a question explaining what do classifications aim um so th for that the answer is they aim to reflect evolutionary relationships another question is explain what is classification traditionally based on so it's based on the studies of morphology and anatomy morphology is the overall form and shape of their bodies such as if they have legs or wings anatomy is the detailed body structure which could be found out by this dissection explain what is used for more accurate means of classification so that we use sequences of bases in dna and of amino acids in proteins these are used for more accurate means of classification explain what organisms share with the more recent ancestor compared to our distant ancestor and they share the base sequences in dna that are more similar than those that they share to a distant ancestor so the more they are uh, similar the base sequences are similar the more closely they are related to their ancestor you might also have to define species so species are groups of organisms that reproduce to produce fertile offspring and these species can be classified by the features that they share so remember these points and learn these as well or if you understand and you can explain it in your own words that's fine as well binomial system is an internationally agreed system in which scientific name of an organism is made up of the genus and species so genus is when so the genus will be starting with a capital letter and the remaining will be in um, small letters homo and then species will be in small letters and it will be in italics so it will be something like um this 
topic i'll just give you an example uh, without writing so you can understand it better so for the flowers flowers which are in part of monocotyledons they have petals in multiples of 3 which means 6 petals and flowers which are dicotyledons they contain petals which are in multiples of 4 or 5 which means 8 or 10 petals and for leaves mo- monocotyledons they have parallel leaf veins and dicotyledons have reticulated leaf veins that means they're all interconnected i'll show you an example of each and this is a diagram version for mo- monocotyledons so for flowers they are petals in multiples of 3 6 petals and for leaves uh, they have parallel leaf veins this is diagram version for dicotyledons for flowers they have petals in multiples of 4 or 5 which means 8 or 10 petals and for leaves they have reticulated leaf veins now let's look at the diagram for both of these so this is a monocotyledon plant feature the petals they are in uh, threes the leaves they have parallel veins and remember that uh, for monocotyledons multiples of 3 could also mean 3 pe- uh, three petals and uh, dicotyledon flower parts in fours or fives reticulated and uh, they have branched veins which means they are all interconnected and also for dicotyledon the petals could also be in 4 or only 5 it's not necessary they have 8 or 10 petals and for a monocotyledon it's not necessary they have 6 petals it could also be only 3 questions regarding monocotyledons and dicotyledons normally come for the mcq questions in paper 2 Now let, let's look at cells. So cells contain cytoplasm, cell membrane, DNA as the genetic material, and the cell features are cell membrane, ribosomes, cytoplasm, genetic material, which is DNA. So you need to learn the labeling for these diagrams. Now this is an animal cell. The left side is an animal cell, and the right side is a plant cell. So the animal cell has been labeled. the middle part is the nucleus the ribosomes cytoplasm mitochondria cell membrane and the plant cell includes chloroplast nucleus mitochondria cytoplasm permanent vacuole ribosomes on rough endoplasmic reticulum cell wall and the cell wall is made from cellulose and cell membrane we'll be making a a uh, different video i'll be making a different video for uh, cells topic in our next videos now this is a fungi cell and fungi are multicellular they their cells have a nucle and cell walls and they're not made from cellulose they do not photosynthesize but they feed by saprophytic and that means they feed on dead or decaying material or they're parasitic which means they live on live material nutrition and this is a mitochondria cytoplasm cell wall and this contains um it contains chitin and uh, it does not contain cellulose this is it has ribosomes cell membrane and a nucleus this is a uh, uh, features of protoctests they are unicellular they have nucleus and some of the protoctists could have cell walls and chloroplasts and some protoctists a uh, protoctists also photosynthesize and uh, some feed on organic substances made by their made by other living organisms and these are examples of protoctist cells these are the features for prokaryotes so they are unicellular they have cell walls again they are not made from cellulose and the cytoplasm but they again have no uh, nucleus or mitochondria and this is a uh, prokaryote cell i'll be giving some mcq questions based on this topic you can try and attempt these questions and comment down the answers in the comment section below and i will check it now there is a small uh, part of viruses explained in this topic and you will have to learn that as well so i'll be explaining it now 
so viruses are not living that's one of the main things you will have to remember about viruses and they ca- they do not carry the seven life processes for themselves so what they do is they take over the host cell host cell could be a person could be any of us you or me it could take the host cells metabolic pathways in order to make many copies of themselves in your body now the virus structure is simply a genetic material there is rna or it could also be dna and it will be inside a protein coat now this is the diagram of a virus so that's the dna or rna this is called the envelope and this is the protein coat now let's look at the mcq questions i had mentioned before these are the questions so this is the first mcq question second third fourth and this is the fifth question now you can write the answers or you can type the answers in the comment section below thank you for watching crazy igcse please subscribe to my channel like the video share and comment